Just how good are you with your wedges? Do you know those numbers exactly? Or is it just close enough? Well, if you're gonna hit the ball close with your wedge game, you are gonna make more putts. Right at it. Another good one there. Guys and girls, welcome back to the Swing Lab Performance YouTube channel. Today I'm joined by Ian McKenzie Olsen, a teaching professional. I'm Thomas Campbell, the director of instruction here. And today we're gonna to be talking about wedge gapping. Not only wedge gapping, but just knowing exactly how far you hit your wedges. So both myself and Ian were fairly good players. Ian had a great, great career in, in college and you know, he's going down the route of being, being a teaching professional. Well, Ian, tell me, you know, when you're on the golf course, what you're thinking about when you're going through the process of deciding how to hit a wedge shot. Yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of factors that come into play. You know, uh, wind, the lie of the golf ball, um, kind of all depends on, you know, where, how I want to launch it, if I want to launch one high, low. Um, I myself consider myself more of a feel player with my wedges. Um, I don't have a clock system like a lot of golfers. I don't have a, you know, a percentage of a full swing that I think of while I'm hitting my wedges. Uh, I know that works for a lot of golfers, including yourself, um, being a little more technical with it. But I think a lot of factors just come in for me, you know, if I'm, I'm am I going to choke down? Am I just going to feel like I'm taking a little bit off it? Yeah, end of the day, you need to know exactly just how you're going to get that ball to carry the right distance. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned you know, wind and lie. Well, that can change a lot. If we hit a higher wedge shot into the wind, the wind's really going to affect it. Once it hits that green, it's probably going to spin backwards mm -hmm. or it may be harder to control your ball flight. So that's really important. But end of the day, hitting the yardage with your wedges is just so important. And today I'm going to put you to the test. All right. So for today's you know, video, I'm first going to get in to start out. We're going to go through a wedge gap in analysis. So I'm gonna get you to hit all four of your wedges. We're gonna get some baseline numbers. So I wanna see kind of what kind of yardages you do hit your stock wedges. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we're going to go on to the wedge range and we're actually going to change up some yardages. So I might give you a couple of those, couple of those awkward in-between yardages mm -hmm. just, just to see how good you are at making those adjustments. You mentioned that you're more of a field player. Mm -hmm. There is nothing wrong with that. If you golfers out there are watching this video, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. In, in goal though is just to make sure you know how to get the ball to carry the right distance and then just know how that ball is going to react on the green. Okay Ian, we're going to get started. You have four wedges in your bag, right? Yep. What lofts do you play? I play 60 degree, 54, 50 and pitching wedge which is 46. 46? Okay, perfect. So you have a, you know some gapping in there we might want to assess, but let's get started and see you hit some shots. Um, golfers, you're watching this video right now, stay tuned because this is so important when it comes down to scoring. You watch the golfers on tour, best golfers in the world. One thing they do really well is they know their numbers with the wedge game. So this is why this video is going to be so important to you. Let's see you hit some shots. All right, so I got my Lob wedge first, which is my 60 degree. Perfect. Should be going about 98 yards to full swing. That's pretty good. You, you did say about. I did say about. <laughs> be about 96. Look at that. Good what call. a guess. That'd be pretty close. Yeah, I think so. Maybe a little left, a little longer. Yeah. All right. So you just mentioned to me you're maybe going off last year's numbers. You know, it it is when we're filming this. It's the end, end of March here in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Probably having a chance to be outside and hit balls off the grass and that too. So, but you'll notice your average carry there was one hundred point four. So two yards off. Well, not, 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 not too bad, right, no. for, for five shots for regards to your averages. Right. So you play three other wedges. What kind of yardage numbers should we expect from the other three wedges? Um, I would say my 54 degree, probably expect around 115 yards. Okay. Um, my 50 degree is around 130. And my 
pitching wedge should be around 145. Okay, so you go on a, approximately 15 yard increments between mm -hmm. each wedge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's put that to the test. Let's now see the 54 degree wedge. Pretty good. That'd be closer to the number. All right, so your averages there actually are very good. So if we look here at your dispersion, we can kind of see this is your 60 degree. This here is your 54 degree wedge. Um, so here's your, here's your averages for those particular shots. You see right at 100 for the 60 degree, 115.7. So you know your numbers pretty well, which is, which is great. So far. So far, right? All right, so now let's move on to, uh, you said 50 degree wedge, right? Yep. And it's at 50, it's not bent strong or weak or anything like that? Nope, it's at 50. Okay. Stand, standard everything. Should be pretty close to the same number. Okay, so three clubs in. Yep. Once again, we can see these circles, they're quite far apart from each other, which is good. And they're on about 15 yard increments. Just like mm -hmm. you said, 100, 115, basically 130. So you know your numbers really well, which is really good considering you haven't probably haven't played much golf over the winter time. Yeah. Which is good, it means you've obviously put in the hard work and your wedge gapping is, is really good. Um, did notice obviously getting a little bit further left there with this, with this club here. Mm -hmm. One thing I did want to touch on is when you were doing a, a wedge fitting uh, or even just talking about wedge gapping and lofts, generally speaking, you want to have about a four to six degree gap between each wedge. Mm -hmm. um, usually stay, keep it pretty consistent. One thing I find interesting with you is you go six degrees gap between your 60 and your 54, and then you go four between your 54 and 50, and another four between your 50 and uh, 46. Yeah. Which, nothing wrong with that at all, as long as it goes the right yardage for you, that is perfectly fine. But generally speaking, you want to have that four to six degree gap between each wedge. Yep, and I've played around with, you know, sets like that in the past, you know, whether it's 52, 56, 60, or 50, 55, 60, and I've kind of, you know, played around with all those. And I think that's also why it's so important to really get fit for it, because, you know, you're gonna see exactly how far like, you know, it doesn't make that much sense that the, my gap between my 54 and 60 is 15 yards and my gap between the 54 and 50 is also 15 yards because obviously that those don't add up, but just that's just the way it is. And I think that's why it's important to kind of get fit and see the exact yardages you're hitting the wedges. Yeah, and that's, like you said, that's just the way it is. You can see if you look at ball speed, 84 to 93, that's nine yard difference. 93 to 102 1.5 you know it's close to that eight nine yard difference mm -hmm. so regardless whatever how you're swinging you know your stock yardage is with each club that's the most important thing the reason i bring this up is when we're about to switch now to is pitching wedge with the set so a lot of times when you're getting fit for your irons people don't know what the loft is on their pitching wedge mm -hmm. and they think it's cool to have a 56 a 60 degree and a 52 all of a sudden they fit into a pitching wedge that's got 44 degrees loft on it all of a sudden you've got an 80 yard gap. That's, this is usually where I see the biggest gap in wedges is between the pitching wedge, the gap wedge, and the, and the sand wedge. Mm -hmm. It's because they, they don't know what loft it is and they just add, the, maybe they just buy the wedges off the rack, think, oh, I need a gap wedge, I need a sand wedge, I need a love wedge, mm -hmm. but not, not thinking I know what loft I need. Right. So that's the most important thing. So a good club fitter is always gonna fit wedges on top of the iron fitting because they're gonna be talking about the loft on the pitching wedge. Yeah. Um, speaking of pitching wedge, let's see your 46 degree pitching wedge and see how far it goes. Oh, 
Okay, so Ian, pitching wedge numbers. One thing I definitely kind of notice is we've been moving up the screen. You can look at our dispersion. As we move up the screen a little bit more, that circle gets a little larger. Mm -hmm. Now that's natural. We're hitting the ball further. You're not gonna hit the ball as close with a full pitching wedge than maybe you are with uh, with a 60 degree or a shorter shot. Right. Think of it, say, as a four iron versus a wedge. You're not gonna be as consistent with a four iron than you are with your wedge numbers. Right. So that's just perfectly kind of normal. We did notice also the trend of continuing a little bit more over to the left. Mm -hmm. So maybe lie angle, maybe face angle. That could be for another day when we start really dialing into while you're while you're hitting those little pull pulls with your with your fuller wedge shots. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting to see. However, from a you know fitting or even just yes, you know a, a standpoint with regards to gapping here, let's just talk about kind of what we typically will see with regards to gapping. Um, so first thing, club speed. The club is longer, so naturally you're probably going to swing a little bit faster, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you can see what's interesting. Your 60 degree wedge, your 54 degree wedge, club speed actually is about the same. Which I find quite interesting. So the loft really was creating the separation between those those two clubs, the six degree loft. So you know your numbers, but if I'm glad that you do know your numbers, you know, otherwise if someone might jump in and say, "Hey, we need to make a change because you know you're 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 not as consistent all the way through." Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden you see the 50 degree wedge, you're a little bit faster, but then pitching wedge all of a sudden quite a lot faster there. So it's interesting how your your club speed numbers are a little bit erratic, I should say. Yeah. Um, ball speed. This is consistent though, so this is the important thing. You can see your ball speed increases by about eight or nine miles an hour per club. So that's where that gapping comes into. So why the carry distance is about 15 yards apart per club. So all to do with that ball speed. Um, you can see as the ball speed increases, so does your smash factor. Your launch angle will decrease because there's less loft on the club. We're going from a 60 degree to a 46 degree wedge, you'll see how the launch angle gradually decreases there too. Mm -hmm. So all good stuff. I will also notice as your you know, ball has more time to stay in the air, your height increases there too. So we know your stock yardage is now. I've got them written down here. 60 is 100, 54 is 115, 50 is 130, 46 is 145. I want to put you to the test here as we finish up. We're going to go to the TrackMan wedge range. And might give you a couple of numbers that you may be not quite expecting. Okay, so first off, I'm gonna challenge you. What's your what's your favorite wedge yardage? My favorite wedge yardage, uh, I would say, if I could leave myself 95 yards every time, it'd be pretty good. Okay, so let's find a 95 yard shot. So right now, this shot here is 100 yards down five feet. Okay. Let's move the ball just a little bit closer here. Let's see what that is at. 97 down five feet. It's pretty close pretty right close. there. That's basically 95 and a half. So we got you set up here, kind of tucked over on the right side. Let's see how good you are with your with your yardage. So this should play right around at 95 yards. Okay. Spin back, just a touch, jumped on it just a touch. You can tell you took a little bit off that one. A little bit too yeah, much. A little bit too much. So how much, this is what I'm gonna say, you know, obviously how much practice have you done this winter, right? Yeah, not a lot. Not a lot. So you, you kind of know your numbers, but now we're putting you, you know, that range was kind of wide open. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you could, you, we could take out a couple of missets if, if we needed to. But now you're you're under pressure. I'm mm -hmm. I'm asking you to hit a shot over water to a green that you know the pin's kind of tucked. Now we really got to know our numbers. Yeah. So that's why I watch why we're doing this process. See a couple more from uh, 95. That's got to be closer. Very good. Very good. Okay, so four shots there. Um, as you were hitting those shots, I was writing down what your club speed number was. Okay. Because you mentioned you're a little bit more of a feel player. Um, so you were probably reacting to the shot before, so you took some off, you noticed it came up shorter, and your last two were in that, in that comfortable spot. 
but you do have to remember when you're on the golf course, we only get one shot at it. Right. So yes, when you're on, when you practice a lot, when you get outside on the wedge range, yeah, you know, no, no doubt you feel probably feel comfortable. But you did mention to me, if I take two or three weeks off, I got to grind a little bit to get my wedge game back. Yeah. So that's the difference I see between maybe a field player versus someone that uses a, a clock system with your wedges. Mm -hmm. You have to be on one point. I mean, you see those flags kind of tucked over there, but one thing the best golfers in the world do is they do get that yardage every single time. Mm -hmm. Coming back to your club speed, when you were hitting those four swings, it was 80, 72, 75, 75. Okay. So we could tell the second shot that you did take some off because you reacted to the, the first one. So your averages were good, but when we put you under pressure, it might change up a little bit. Yeah. So I'm, I mean, I'm not saying you absolutely have to do a clock system or anything like that, but I, I just think it's it can help a lot of golfers out. Yeah. So something something to play around with. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna now give you uh, a couple of different yardages here. So maybe a couple like in betweeners. Okay. Um. So right in between 54 and 60, you're 115 to 100. Let's try and find about 110 and maybe go forward a couple more yards. Let's go 107. This here would be perfect. So this is, this is up seven inches, so this is right at 10, 107 and a half, if you want to call it. Okay, I'm at 54, and I'm going to take a little bit off it. Okay. This is what you're trying to tell me, hey, I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great shot. Thank you. Another good one there. Very nice. Yeah, so this yardage, a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like you're a little bit more kind of comfortable. Well, you knew, and that's what's most important, you knew that it was 54, just taking a little bit off it. Mm -hmm. But you just got to make sure you know. I can tell you, I have all my numbers kind of written down like a, I have like a spreadsheet of all my carry distances for 7.30, 9 o'clock, 10.30 for my 60, 56, 52, and then 9 o'clock, 10.30, uh, full swing with my wedge. I don't have a full swing yardage for my other three wedges because um, I know if I get the ball up in the air, it's going to spin and be harder to control. Yeah. So as long as you know what you're doing, that's the most important thing. All right, one more yardage. Do you have a, maybe a yardage you want to test yourself at? Uh, I would say something in between pitching wedge and gap wedge. All right, so we just backed you up here to 137 yards. Uh, I did, did just notice this is down 15 feet, so we can maybe back you up just a little bit further. No, we just got 138 yards. Um, fifth down 15 feet, so every three feet is one yard. Mm -hmm. So now this is playing, what, 133? Yep. Yep. Let's uh, see how good you are from 133. I'm gonna try to flight a little pitching wedge. This is kind of a number that I could, you know, I could get the gap wedge there, right? But, you know, it'd be way up in the air, it'd be really spinny, a lot harder to control. All right, so important you brought that up with regards to flighting it down. Now we have track man set, you know, on very, very light winds. You can see it over on the right, it's kind of bouncing around a little bit between maybe one or two miles an hour into the wind. But yeah, if you try to jump on that 52 and you had a little bit more wind, that's when it's gonna be hard to you know, control it. So mm -hmm. wind will definitely affect it. So I like this choice versus trying to get a couple extra yards out of the gap wedge. Yeah. That's good. Very nice, right at it. And that is a good miss. I like that, the sh that we're coming up just short rather than going past the flag. Yeah, That's important to pay attention to. All right, so Ian, a quick little gapping analysis, including a little bit of pressure on your, on your wedge game. What have you found out and what do you think you wanna work on as you're leading into the spring golf season? Yeah, so um, we talked about kind of the difference between you know, kind of relying on your feel versus, you know, being more technical about it. Um, 
having a clock system, having a percentage, something like that. You're more of a technical guy. I'm more of a feel guy. Um, the one benefit I think that we also talked about between being more technical, having your clock system is you can kind of always rely on that. Um, what we talked about, the flaw with my type of way I play my wedges is I kind of always have to be dialed in. I always have to be prepared. You know, I can't take a couple of weeks off and then go expect to have my yardages be perfect. When if you do have that clock system, you can still rely on that spot and you should, you're probably a little bit more accurate. Um, that being said, I do like the way I play my wedges. I think wedges is definitely a strength to my game. Um, there's, you know, really good wedge players that do it both ways. Um, it's probably more often that they lean towards being a little more technical, having those exact spots where they see the club in each position. Um, but they, do do it in both ways and I think that you know I could definitely see myself trying that out and seeing if I'm picking spots seeing if my wedge game even improves because I even though I think it's a strength I definitely have room to grow in my wedge game as well um, so I think that would definitely be something I could try out and and see if I like it and like playing like that yeah I think every golfer even if you're a great wedge player you can always be better right yep. so you can always look at your strengths you know pay attention obviously how far you're hitting each club but mm -hmm really comes down to is how do you push yourself even harder to be a better golfer? Right. Hitting wedges closer to the, closer to the hole and making more putts, that's going to you know, improve, your, improve your scores for sure. So, I mean, golfers, depending on whether you're more of a field player with your wedges or if you're maybe more systematic like I am with a, with a clock system, end goal is knowing your yardage. If you know how far you hit each wedge, if you know how to hit shots in between yardages, that is most important. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned a lot about wedge game and why it's so important to get it dialed in. Let us know what you think and also make sure you subscribe to our channel.